Freaky fun for everyone, sold set. Leonardo, the Katana Blade. My God. Attack the evil and humanoid, forcing him back into the earth. Hey, the name's Boglet, you sold separately. Uh, okay. Battle armor, he made a skeleton for each soul separately. You put them out together. Turn them into the light, and they change into even more powerful. Battle against Lion-O in the new Thundercat ally. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Welcome to a new episode of that new toy smell. I was just uh, d dusting, dusting, dusting off my figures here, uh, making sure they're clean. Um, hey, so you guys are probably wondering what happened to your co-host. I thought there were two of you on the show now, and yes, um, normally there would be, except he's gone this week uh, because he's had a sleepover. Because people apparently want him to visit them and stay in their house, which. Uh, trust me, I do not understand, but whatever. Hope he enjoys it. Uh, but today, yes, we are going to be talking about the uh, Mega Constructs Masters of the Universe stuff because, I, I, you know, I do like Masters of the Universe stuff, but everybody's out there covering Masters of the Universe stuff these days. No matter where you go on YouTube, you can't, you know, hit a, a toy video channel or a, a, a playlist, it seems, without hitting some sort of Masters of the Universe content where people are talking about classics or people are talking about uh, the new Origins line. And yeah, that's great. Origins is coming to stores now. Um, none apparently around me. I've tried, you know, online, but you get the online notification, it's available, and then as soon as you get there, it's sold out already. Uh, we actually traveled to another state uh, last week, and uh, I just knocked over a suitcase, that's cool. Uh, we actually traveled to another state, and uh, went to a bunch of Walmarts in a completely different market, completely different area. Still, there were none down there, just like there are none around here. So, uh, they're out there somewhere, people are getting them, um, just not me, and you know, I, I don't know that I even want to talk about them until I had a bunch of them. I, I don't want to do just like one figure uh, as some sort of review. But as it turns out, the Mega Construct stuff, I actually had a bunch of those. I've been buying the minifigures. I like the minifigures. The minifigures are cool. And it turns out I bought that Wind Raider attack set and just never did anything with it. So before we jump into all of that other stuff, why don't we take a look at the Mega Constructs Masters of the Universe line and kind of take a look at where it came from and what's out there and the type of stuff that you can expect from it. Mega Brands line of Mega Blocks are compatible with other leading brands of block toys. And we'll just kind of leave it at that. Their Mega Constructs line are little more articulated. There's lots of smaller pieces that can be used to create more interesting things. And they created the Mega Constructs Heroes line in order to show off minifigs from a whole bunch of different properties. Mixed in with those properties, we found Masters of the Universe figures. In the Constructs Heroes Series 1, we found He-Man and Skeletor. In Series 2, we got Tila and Beastman. In Series 3, we got Faker. In Series 4, we got Evil Lynn and Man at Arms. And in Series 5, we got Stratos and Scareglow. And people were so enthused about these figures that it started their own line of just Masters of the Universe Mega Constructs figures, vehicles, and play sets. Series 1 of the Masters of the Universe Heroes includes Evil Lynn in a filmation coloring, Moss Man without any flocking, Prince Adam, Skeletor in his filmation coloring, and a recoloring of Stratos, flipping the red armor blue wings for the blue armor red wings, which is a common thing that everybody does with Stratos. 
Now they have announced a second series, but I haven't seen these yet. I don't think they're going to hit stores until later in the year, and I'm not sure if coronavirus has pushed them out even further, uh, but scheduled in that wave of Series 2 is going to be Fisto, Stinkor, Snake Armor Tila, Evil Lynn, uh, the Ultimate Battlegrounds version of Evil Lynn, which is black and white, and Battle Armor Faker. They also released a collector's five pack of the original uh, figures of He-Man, Skeletor, Tila, Beastman, and Faker, but this time in one convenient to buy package, so you didn't have to try to track them down from the old Mega Constructs Heroes line. They also released a versus pack, only one so far that I know of, He-Man versus Beastman. And then there are the building sets, the play sets. These are the ones that make people go absolutely freaking crazy on the internet. First up was the San Diego Comic-Con 2019 exclusive Battle Bones set that came with a flocked Mossman, a battle damaged faker in pink armor, man at arms, Tila, and a whole bunch of extra accessories and a pine air freshener for Mossman, because you want him to stink. We then got the Wind Raider attack set, which had He-Man and Skeletor, but Skeletor this time had purple feet to make him different. Then we had the Point Dread Talon Fighter versus Panthor, which had Zodak, White Outfit Sorceress, Battle Armor Skeletor, Panthor, and Zor, the sorceress as a bird, and then a whole bunch of accessories. We had Rotom versus Battle Cat, or Battle Cat versus Rotom, if you prefer, which finally came with Merman and Battle Armor He Man, and of course, Battle Cat. Now, they did show off a Sky Sled, and that was supposed to be uh, Prince Adam from the mini comic, Beast Man from the mini comic, and Scareglow from the mini comic. And then they canceled it. I'm not sure why, but they did announce that in its place, they're gonna be releasing the Battle Ram, which I'm not sure as of this recording is out yet. I don't think it is. I think it's coming out later in the year, but the Battle Ram will separate into its two parts and it will come with Mechanic and Triclops. And then finally, the big daddy, Castle Grayskull. Now this one is under the Mega Constructs Pro Builder line because it has over 3,500 pieces, 3,508 to be exact, and it comes with a bunch of minifigs, including another sorceress, green goddess Tila, man-at-arms in the Alcala style, He-Man in the Alcala style, Skeletor in the Alcala style, Red Beast Man, which I believe is the mini comic version, another version of Zor, the bird, the weapons rack, and a ton of accessories. Now don't misunderstand me, this Castle Grayskull is cool, but I will never own one because it sold at original retail for $250 and if you didn't grab it at original retail, it's only going to be more expensive to get it as time goes on. You're not gonna find this thing on the clearance rack at TJ Maxx or uh, sitting in a giant pile at Ollie's. Hopefully you got yours when it was $250 or be prepared to sell a small child from your family in order to be able to afford what it's going to cost to pick this up on the secondary market. All right, so as you can see with the minifigures for Masters of the Universe with the Mega Construct stuff, uh, it was just kind of a hodgepodge for a long time. It was part of the other stuff that they were doing uh, with making these minifigures. And as I ran across them, 
I would buy them. Like I would, you know, it, when I was in the store and I, I found a Moss Man, I was like, oh, cool, Moss Man, he's cool. And I bought the Skeletor when I saw Skeletor, obviously, because I love Skeletor. And then uh, I found the He Man. I was like, oh, cool, it's a He Man. And then I got a Beast Man. And then I bought a Stratos. And then I bought a Tila. And then I bought a Faker. And you know these things these are like the right price point for me because i am cheap i you know it's just a fact of life that i am cheap um but these things are great uh and the fact that you can pop off the pieces and interchange them is cool but i don't ever really do that um i pretty much leave them exactly as they are and play with them uh as as these uh just leaving them completely <laughs> as the minifigures and play around with them this way um, and then, of course, I, I saw another Skeletor in the uh, you know the other colors, so I went ahead and bought that. And when I when I do run across them, I buy them. Um, even Tila is a character that I'm not exactly a huge fan of, but it was the right price, so I figured why not? If I happen to be in a store and I I see them, I'll just like I said grab them. But I'm not going out of my way to hunt and pick uh, you know any particular ones out. I'm just as I run across them, I'll grab them. But, like, I don't have an evil Lynn, I don't have a man at arms, and I'm not going to search from store to store. I'm not going to go online and order them or anything like that. If I happen to see them, I see them, great. And if I don't, then I don't. No big deal. Uh, it's not. It's not that big of a, a line for me to collect, but uh, I, like I said, I do enjoy, well, I, I enjoy minifigs anyway. I do like, you know, little play sets, little toys, little characters. Uh, one, if they're cheap. Two, they don't take up a lot of space. Uh, and three, I don't know, there's just something about tiny things with a lot of detail that I just kind of like. I like them more. Uh, plus, you know, I, I can go, hey, look, I've got a faker, uh, and I did not pay $30 online plus ship $38 plus shipping whatever they were uh, from maddiecollector.com you know I mean granted this doesn't look like a classic so it's a lot smaller uh, but this is like five bucks at Walmart uh, which to me is just a better proposition overall you might feel differently and if you do great but uh, I was in a TJ Maxx <laughs> Don't ask why. Uh, and I did find the Wind Raider there, and it was like $9.99 or something like that on clearance at TJ Maxx, because TJ Maxx gets stuff that's like from other stores that didn't sell, and then they go there and go on clearance. I don't know. It's, it's like closeouts and whatever. They're like an upscale big lots or something. I'm not exactly sure how it works out. But uh, I thought, you know, it would be fun to actually build it. Uh, as part of the show, and and I'm I'm not great at building this type of stuff. Killen was the guy who always bought the Legos and built a lot of that stuff. Um, so the Wind Raider, uh, it's not huge um, because you know obviously these are minifigs and these are you know Legos or whatever. But uh, or, I'm sorry, not like uh, Mega 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 Blocks. <clears throat> <clears throat> Where did that come from? <clears throat> sorry, um, but. Uh, building these things usually takes me a lot longer than the average person, uh, just because uh, I don't, it's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle uh, in many ways, even though you have instructions right in front of you. So I was kind of wondering how long it would actually take for me to build this. So I did it all in one solid build. Uh, obviously, I, I, I've speeded up here because I don't think anybody wants to sit through watching however long it actually took me to build this thing. Uh, but here's the uh, time time-lapse video of me building the Wind Raider. Oh, <laughs> 
54 minutes that's right the video that you just saw that was two and a half minutes was 54 minutes uh, that's how long it took me to build the Wind Raider like I said I am not the most skilled when it comes to building things and putting it together but overall uh, I think it looks nice it's 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 snazzy looking now the one thing Look, I understand the original Wind Raider had this anchor, uh, you know, because the idea was it looked kind of like a boat uh, and it, it flew in the air and so the anchor would drop an anchor onto the building to hold it in place so it didn't fly away. Sure, okay. But I really don't like having this dangly thing on there. Um, I really wish what they had done instead was put um, like a little grip hook on there, put a little spot where you could clip it and maybe just clip it at an angle uh, like this and just clip it and be done with it. And there it goes. Like it is clipped on, leave it that way permanently uh, and you never have to worry about it again. I would, I would have enjoyed that a lot more. The other thing that I think it really needs uh, is a stand. I wish there had been extra pieces in there to put underneath uh, so you could set it on a shelf and, and set it like up at an angle, like maybe like this. So you'd have a, a flat bottom piece and some pieces that come up that are clear plastic and then have it, you know, at an angle uh, like this sitting on your shelf. I think that would have been super cool. So that may be something I build myself to find it a spot uh, to go, you know, up here or somewhere on, uh, on my bookcase, on my desk. Um, but otherwise, I think it's a neat toy, you know, overall. Uh, and, the, and the weird thing was, uh, that there were a bunch of leftover pieces. And I understand they give you extra pieces just in case, uh, you know, stuff gets lost or they know that their factory, certain machines sometimes spit out the wrong numbers so they do a little extra, uh, you know, whatever. Um, so I took the extra pieces and I built this little boat. Uh, and this little boat, I, I figure this is like a little spear gun so you can go after Merman and, and try to find him and spear him. Um, it's just basically... Just a little little boat thing. And there's your motor. And in fact, uh, if you wanted to, uh, you know, I was thinking uh, if you if you even like had water, you could put it in. Uh, you could sort of you could you could just break it apart. Uh, you could flip the thing over and f and flip this part down like an actual outboard motor, uh, and then you'd be able to you know put it in the water. I don't know if this thing would actually float. Uh, or anything like that? Probably not, just because, uh, you know, these things are plastic, they aren't really made to be in water like that, and it does have a lot of, you know, dead space, empty space in there, but, you know, that's, I mean, this is the amount of extra pieces that you get so you can build something else to go with your Wind Raider. And of course we got another uh, He-Man and another Skeletor, and um, these guys, I, I discussed in the video that this Skeletor comes with the purple feet. That's the thing that makes him different. Uh, He-Man, it, he he's got much bolder colors uh, than the regular one. So here's, here's the regular one. If I can get it, focus, focus on these guys. Not, not my face. Focus, focus here. 
if I can get it to. Uh, you can see the colors are much bolder on that He-Man. Um, the the red on his on his chest armor uh, pops out a whole lot more. Um, but he does come with the axe and not the sword and shield. Um, but then Skeletor, otherwise, he is the same, except that he does come with the sword instead of the Havoc Staff. Uh, so if I can get that to focus, uh, you can see that he is pretty much the same. Maybe a little lighter on the accents on the chest armor. Uh, but otherwise, there's there's the, the purple feet. Now, the, the other thing is, because it's a playset, they give you uh, this green piece uh, for a character stand, as opposed to with the other figures that have like these nameplates. Um, these earlier ones were actually a, a, like a two-part piece that you would build together. Now, when they come, it's just a single piece uh, with this little you know ramp section in the front, as opposed to here where you had a black and green piece that you would put together. Um, but for the play sets, it's just a little piece of land, as I knock stuff over down there, uh, it's just a little piece of land so you could, you know, stick it somewhere on your play sets with your other <coughs> buildable brick sets, <coughs> which I shall not name, because they really don't like it when you do that in stuff that's not about them. But anyway, I. I, I do like these. Like I said, they're cheap, and when I run across them, I grab them. Um, if I find, if I see any of the other ones, if I see, um, you know, like Point Dread with the Talon Fighter, I'll grab it. Um, you know, Castle Grayskull, that one's a no. Um, one, uh, you know, I, I'm never going to build it. If, if I were to buy it, if I were to just say, screw it, I'm going to pay $600 or whatever. I don't even remember what it's going for in the secondary market nowadays. But if I were to just buy it, uh, I would never build it. And that's not because I want to show off the box, uh, because I want to keep it mint or anything like that, but because I don't have 14 hours <laughs> to, to put the thing together uh, with the 3500 p 3508 exactly pieces uh for that thing to go together so i don't know maybe that's something that you guys really enjoy maybe you really enjoy the building i'm not as big a fan of the building i would much prefer that this came in like i don't know eight pieces and the eight pieces would just snap together and then i had it because i'm gonna build a wind raider and then i'm gonna have a wind raider I'm never going to take this apart and rebuild it as a motorcycle, or rebuild it as a sailboat, or rebuild it as a rocket ship. It's the Wind Raider. That's why I bought it. I bought it because I wanted the Wind Raider, so now it's the Wind Raider. Uh, I'm, I'm almost, I almost want to be uh, the dude from the Lego movie and get the craggle and uh, start going through and super gluing everything together. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe that seems like a little bit too much. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so that's going to do it as far as this video stuff goes. But we will be right back with the mailbag. All right, we are back for the mailbag section, and the first question up is what happened to Monday's episode? Uh, I actually had a couple people. Actually, had several people uh, message me wanting to know what happened to Monday's episode. Normally on Mondays, I post a nerd news desk, which is a flashback to an old episode of that new toy smell, uh, highlighting old stuff. And quite frankly, we were out of town, and I forgot to tell everybody that there wouldn't be one because I wasn't around to do one. Um, these particular episodes, that new toy smells, we usually film in advance. Um, so I'm actually filming this before, a couple days before you're actually watching it. Um, so, you know, when it came to last week's episode, we knew we were going to be out of town. We wrapped everything up. We had it filmed. I uploaded it to YouTube and then just told it to publish it uh, at a particular time on last Saturday. And then went to the website, put in the link, and told the website to publish it at a particular time last Saturday. So then as far as everybody else knew, it just showed up in the feed and there it was it was great when it came to monday i forgot that i wasn't home uh so or at least i forgot to tell you that i wouldn't be home uh so i wasn't <clears throat> digging through the old hard drives and pulling off files and reassembling any episodes uh so that's what happened there <clears throat> yeah that was that's pretty much it that's all that happened um Let's see here. 
We got some comments about last week's episode on the uh, Bandai stuff. Someone said, uh, excited to hear the plans you have in place for the show, and I have to commend you for having the force. Oh, this is writer, writer origin. I should have mentioned that. Uh, excited to hear the plans that you have in place for the show, and I have to commend you for having the foresight to organize everything in the seasons. Never expect you to cover Japanese super robots. Also, this was a pleasant surprise. Um, I never expected to be doing this show, quite honestly. Uh, I didn't set out to bring back that new toy smell. Uh, just you can thank the quarantine for that. Uh, it was just a matter of I was going through the old hard drives. I found the old episodes. I started putting them up. People kept asking to do new stuff, and they wanted new episodes. And I just said, "Hey, why not? I got a bunch of stuff here. Might as well put it together." So then, you know, once I jumped in and started doing everything, that's when I started getting more ideas about the best ways of doing stuff. And I think seasons make sense. Seasons just kind of works. Now I've had people ask about DVDs. Am I going to put seasons on DVD? I can, I guess, if if people really want that. Um, I mean, I guess we would just burn them and maybe do some bonus stuff to throw on the discs, I guess. But um, you know, maybe some classic episodes or something. I don't know. Uh, I hadn't really. I, I don't. I don't know if there's a place for like online. Like I would send them the files and they would master the DVDs on demand as as people would order them. I don't know if that's a thing. Like, you can do that with t-shirts, you know? Like, I can send my designs to Teespring, and you guys order a shirt, and they print the shirt, and they mail it out. And I just hit the microphone, sorry. Uh, they print the shirt, and then they mail it out. I don't know if there's a place like that for, like, DVDs and stuff, so... I, I don't know. Um, as far as um, making them, like, video on demand, making them downloadable, I mean, they're on YouTube. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where else you would want them, really. I mean, I, I did throw some up on... Vimeo uh, at one point so you can watch some of them on there but I mean that's kind of a dead platform nowadays I don't know where else uh, I, I would put these things maybe uh, putting them into seasons uh, we can try to get them on Amazon or something I don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know I'm not really all that worried about any of that stuff I just make the stuff uh, and then We'll worry about anything else later. Um, anyway, Anthony uh, Sebulars, Seb, Sebu, Sebu, Sebularsi. Not sure how to pronounce this name. Sorry about that. He goes, um, Bart D Man here. Oh, oh, Bart. Wait, Bart D Man. You're you're actually Anthony. Like I recognize the name. I mean, Anthony. The Anthony Sebularsi has commented on videos for a decade uh, on this channel uh, on Pop Culture Network stuff that you're Bart D-Man? I didn't know that. Well, that's weird. Finding out that two viewers are the same guy. Um, anyway, this is, he says this is the account I use with my mobile phone. You know, you, you can use the same account on your mobile phone. You don't have to have two accounts. Just, just saying. Uh, I got nothing much to say about the video review. All I can say is I enjoyed the video as usual. Okay, well, that's cool. Regarding the mask boulder hill without a boulder, it's better to have a hill with no boulder than a hill and just the boulder in the box. I guess that's true. Any plans with OG Dungeons & Dragons stuff? Because D&D has been getting some attention lately with some unnecessary changes, it'd be nice to talk about the OG stuff. Maybe? Um, again, if I can get my hands on some of it, um, when we traveled last week, part of the reason why we traveled was uh, I wanted to go to some other toy stores in other areas and try to find some other pieces of stuff. Like I said, when, whenever we do a video, I want to have a at least something of it. You know, I don't have the entire line. I'm not going to have Castle Grayskull and Rotan and the Talon Fighter and, you know, everything else, but, but at least I had something from it. So I've got a physical piece to look at and to, to play with and to comment on and, you know, whatever. Um, so if I can find some of those original, like I remember those figures coming out, uh, they used to advertise them in comic books all the time, of course. And I think it was back when three, was it, was it AD and D 3.0 or 3.5? One of those, um, 
I think. Or maybe it was just under the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons name. Anyway, regardless. Yeah, I, I remember some of that stuff. Um, and if I can find some of that, I can get my hands on it, you know, then, then that's something that we can definitely look at. I, I really don't like doing videos on stuff that I don't have any pieces of. Um, and that that's... I, I know I could... But then it, I, I don't know, it just feels wrong to not actually have something from it to hold and to talk about and discuss. Um, so it, unless I can, like, like with Silverhawks, I would love to cover Silverhawks. And I used to have some Silverhawks stuff when I was a kid. The stuff is broken and long gone. Uh, again, probably lost it in a flood or something. Um, I, I wish I had some Silverhawks figures and I could do I could talk about the line and then pull out the figures and we can play with them and you know whatever discuss them but without stuff to hold on to uh, it's gonna be tough so I'll keep my eyes open I mean I'm, I'm definitely keeping my eyes open and looking for things the problem is I'm going around to these toy stores and most of the things I'm finding are just the same over and over of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like modern Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stuff um, uh, starting lineup sports figures, Funko Pops uh, everywhere. Um, like, I don't know. I was in the store the other day and someone was telling me that they brought back the, um, the real Ghostbusters. I might pick up a couple of those and, and do a video on that. That, that could be kind of fun. Um, I know we covered it a long time ago on that new toy smell. Uh, but, you know, you can always update things, especially if it's a, a modern remake of something and, you know, kind of look at it in, with the light of how does it compare to the originals. Uh, that's something that could be done on here as well. Um, which, again, also, uh, people that have stuff, I've had a couple people, like, you know, send me a message and they're like, hey, I, I'll send you this stuff uh, if, if you, you know, want to do a video on it. Um, here's the only thing, though. If, if you send it to me, I can't guarantee that I'll send it back um, or it, it'll survive in all its pieces um, and that's the thing I, I like I'm, I'm not saying I'm gonna break your toys um, but what I'm saying is that you you gotta understand there's like an insurance liability type of thing um, if you send it it's possible it might get broken in the mail uh, I have it I do reviews on it I'm touching it I'm playing with it I'm, I'm bending stuff and moving stuff something might snap and break I'm not trying to break it but it could happen. Um, and that's something you got to keep in mind. How secure do you feel uh, sharing something uh, when stuff like that happens? So kind of keep that in mind uh, with, with some of the stuff that we're doing on the show. But yeah, so back to Dungeons & Dragons. I would love to. I would love to if I could. Uh, Neo Guest says, did miss watching this channel. All right. Well, I'm glad uh, you're back, although we never really left. I mean, we're always doing stuff uh, a lot less frequently, although I guess doing stuff more frequently gets people to pay attention uh, a lot more. Um, which brings up another question um, someone asked on Facebook, um, what are some of the other show ideas that we're going to do here when we take a break from that new toy smell and video game losers when we have that that time period in between. Um, like I said, part of it's going to be working ahead on some of the stuff. I've got some ideas on some of the stuff for um, season for season 2020, episodes 11 through 20. Um, part of that's going to be working ahead, but there are some other things. Like, some of it's going to be comic book related. I, would, I, I want to do some stuff discussing certain you know, character arcs, story arcs, and stuff like that. Um, and then some of it can like tie into stuff that we may talk about later th later on in that new toy smell. For instance, uh, when I was cleaning not too long ago, I found Superman Blue and Superman Red. And oh, his his electrical energy just came off and fell up there. But it, regardless, uh, I just found these the other day and I thought, you know what? I would love to do a thing talking about this particular storyline and then uh, on an episode of that new toy smell, we could talk about the toys. That'd be cool. I think that'd be fun. Um, so there are certain things that tie in to different properties and different things um, that there's still a, a synergy I guess is the right way to, to say it, between some of the different things that we're working on. They're not completely out of left field. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do um, uh, a, a blog, a rundown, watching every episode of Gilmore Girls or something like that. Um, I've never seen Gilmore Girls, honest 
promise. Uh, but um, you know, it's, it's not going to be anything too too detached from the stuff that's coming now. And, and actually, the, the formula that, that you find on that new toy smell is the same type of formula we use for a lot of stuff on Video Game Losers, which will be uh, the same similar type format that we're going to use for a lot of stuff on uh, whatever we call the comic show. I don't know if we're going to call it I Need Comics. Maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. I think maybe, but I'm not 100% I'm not positive on that. Uh, let's see here. If you could bring back one toy line from your childhood, what would it be? Um, oh, and that's from uh, Lance. Um, if I could bring back any uh, toy line from my childhood. Look, I'm kind of looking around real quick. Uh, what, what toys do I have? Um, because, of course, I want to say Tron, but of course Tron is coming back. Uh, Tron is uh, showing up in a lot of stuff. Silverhawks. But but that would have to be like the cartoon and everything. That was that was more of a multimedia thing, not necessarily the toys. Oh, I got one, and this is one you might actually see a future episode of that new toy smell on because I got one of these toys, and I might have some more coming soon. And that is Jace and the Wheeled Warriors. Uh, as a matter of fact, Wheeled Warriors we will probably be covering on. Uh, let's see, this is episode eight. Uh, episode ten is going to be the Masters of the Universe. Um, uh, you know, best figures of all time based on the poll um, that's in the official Facebook group. Um, but um, number nine, nine might be. I don't know. Nine might have to wait because I'm. I, I've got one. I've got one wheeled warrior and some accessories. I'm trying. I, I've got another one coming. Um, but it's coming from actually out of the country, which I didn't realize when I ordered it. Uh, I was looking at a whole bunch of different ones, and then I was like, okay, I like this one, this has the, the stuff I want, and then I clicked buy, and then realized it was uh, coming from like Taiwan, uh, which means that it's going to take a lot of extra time. It's already been like three weeks that I've been waiting for this thing to come, and it's still not here yet. And I don't know if they hold these things in quarantine because of coronavirus or what the deal is, uh, but of course, you know, it's, it's always a slow boat. Uh, that comes across the Atlantic, so or it's coming across the Pacific, wherever. Um, it always seems to take forever on a lot of that stuff if you don't pay for like the thirty-dollar airmail delivery, whatever. So I, I don't know if it's going to come in time. If it comes in time, that we can do it for next week. Uh, but like I said, I like to work ahead, um, so I'm going to need to know in the next two days whether or not I'm going to have this piece and if I have it then I'm, you know, I'll be more than happy to uh, do that video but otherwise um, we've got a couple other things in the hopper that might come up uh, we are going to talk about Mega Man toys uh, at some point we are going to talk about some Yokai Watch stuff um, because Gamer really enjoyed Yokai Watch and all that stuff so you've got that to look forward to but again that might end up in 11 through 20 it just kind of depends on how the stuff kind of shakes out in the next week or so with everything else um, but yeah so some of that other stuff it's not like I said it's not completely disconnected uh, but it's it's you know in the same wheelhouse uh, as the stuff you see here so hopefully that takes care of any and ang ang oh my I was going to say anxiety, and for some reason I just couldn't get it out. And I wanted to say Ang Lee, uh, the director of uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and The Hulk. Um, I don't know why. Don't know why. <laughs> just stuck there. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for watching. As always, you can email me dirt at the... I was going to say Dirt at the Click Nation. No, that's for the Comic Book Chronicles podcast, which I was on this week. Uh, I'm not doing the Comic Book Chronicles podcast. This is my show. Uh, this is Dirt at uh, PopCultureNetwork.com or Dirt at ThePopSeed.net. That's how you can find me. Uh, don't forget to check out Gamer Stuff. You can find him on YouTube at his channel, or you can find him over on Twitch. Make sure you jump into that Facebook group, guys. Jump in on that poll. Uh, if nobody else votes, I'm just going to... like make six uh, or eight profiles put them all on Disco Skeletor make Disco Skeletor the number one Master of the Universe figure of all time uh, unless other people are going to jump in there and get involved uh, and, and throw down some comments because I like discussion on this stuff and I like reasoning why people like one particular Masters of the Universe figure over another um, in fact I'll tell you what 
And just leave a comment on the YouTube video if you don't want to do the actual poll. If you're thinking, ah, I don't want to go to Facebook and go into Facebook and, and make an account or log in and, you know, whatever and, and do all this stuff, fine. Leave a comment down here. Tell me, like, your top five from, from all the lines, from every Masters of the Universe line, what are your top five figures and why? Um, and then I'll, I'll put them in with the votes and everything and incorporate it and tally all that stuff together. Uh, you can also call our 24-hour voice mail line. It's area code 217-953-4025. Um, you can always ask the questions there if you'd rather. If it's kind of, if you don't really know how to explain it by writing it out and you want to kind of chat a little bit, um, you know, you can ramble on there a little bit because we do have the uh, 10 minutes of voicemail time that you can leave a message there. So feel free to do that there. That's going to do it for me. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Mao mao, papa, um mao mao, papa, um mao mao, papa, um mao mao.